Hello astronomers, Jimmy Newland here. I have a third part to making astronomical images with FITS files that I wanted to demonstrate, and I wanted to use the DS9 program. DS9 is a standard tool in the Professional Astronomer's Toolkit, but not so much in the Amateur Astronomer's Toolkit. And um, it's got some quirks, some foibles, so uh, be prepared for it to potentially crash on me here. First thing I want you to notice is how you get it installed is going to vary from one computer to another. Uh, if you have a Macintosh, you download it and install it. If you have Windows, you download it and install it. If you have Linux, it's made in a Unix environment to start with, and how you install it depends on your flavor of Linux. Uh, I'm running it on my Mac, and even though it runs, for the most part, there are a lot of things about DS9 that are not... Uh, kept up to date in terms of the, the way the GUI works. So, uh, in fact, I'm going to demonstrate one when I try to save my file. You'll see what I mean. As is always the case, whenever you're working with, with FITS files, which is the astronomical standard for uh, imaging, these are uh, representative colors. So a filter is placed over the detector and you allow light to pass through and whatever filter you have is what you save the file as. Uh, so we demonstrated that with the Aladdin program from CDS. I demonstrated that with GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program. And now I'm going to demonstrate uh, the same thing, taking three different filtered images and stacking them together or blending them together to make a color image. First of all, DS9 has very strange menus. Besides having the things across the top, which do what you expect, they have these uh, bars, these menu bars here. And many of the things that you can see in the menu bars here are replicated in the menus up top. Um, but I'm going to use the menu bar because I know it works more or less the same on every computer, more or less. So the first thing you need to know is this program is designed to work with FITS files, and it is not necessarily designed with the uh, you know, non-astronomy user in mind. So some things are confusing. So uh, if you want to make a three color image, you click on the frame button so that you got that menu bar up. And now you click RGB. And you'll notice after I clicked frame and RGB here, it opened up this little dialog box. And it's waiting for me to open up the red, then the green, then the blue. And from this little side window here, I'm going to control what DS9 actually shows me. So uh, now I'm going to go File and Open. Well, now that the red thing is selected, I'm going to make this window bigger so that you can you can tell that this is not as easy to use as uh, GN, as GNU uh, Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP as most humans call it. Even the dialog boxes here are annoying. Um, so go to my folder. I saved these on the desktop, as is always the case with the other examples I did. I gave them good file names. The uh, LCO, Las Cumbres Observatory, and Skynet Robotic Telescope Network, they both use really weird file names. So I always make sure that I know which filter I used on that particular file, and I give it the name of the file, I mean the uh, object I was imaging, and a uh, the name of the filter so it's a lot easier to open it. So I'm going to check again. I was on red. So red and I'm going to hit open and then I'm going to notice that now down here in the uh, the main frame window here it's got some stars and it's that's a start. So let's go to green and file and open and do the same thing and then blue and then file and then open and do the same thing and it's actually here we'll go to the zoom menu and zoom zoom fit. You can see that it's there, and much like with uh, GIMP and with Aladdin, until you start to play with the stretch uh, of the individual um, frames, it's hard to see what's actually going on. So um, I'm going to click on Scale, where I can fiddle with those things. And actually, I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to go back to red, and I'm going to uncheck the other two. I'm going to zoom in. I want you all to see. Now I choose to do this. So I'm zoomed way in. You can see an individual region of this image. And I'm going to hit the command key and click and drag. 
Now, if I do it, if I click and drag without holding the command key, nothing happens. But if I hit the command key, which is control on a Windows computer, and I click and drag to the left and the right, it's automatically attempting to mess mess with the scale. And what I'm going to do is get it where there's a little, and this is all based on opinion and feeling. So it's a little bit harder to uh, explicitly follow the same steps every single time. If I open this up again and do it a different way, I'll get a slightly different look. Again, that was command and drag to the left and the right. And then I'm going to go to green, I'm going to click view, and notice that how, how uh, it's really hard to see it. So I'm going to do the same thing, command and drag to the left and right until I kind of get what I wanted. So in this case, if I go all the way over here, everything's green. If I drag a little bit to the right, you can get to sort of in between where there's stuff in the background, but you can still see individual stars. And that, that's kind of what I want. And then blue, I'm going to do the same thing, uncheck the green, and I'm going to do the same deal. And the object you uh, imaged may have less red or green or blue light depending on, well, a lot of things, how long the exposure was and what kind of things you're looking at. These are, this is a globular cluster, and there's not as much blue light. And I'll go there. And I'm going to turn all three of them on. And notice, by the way, in GIMP, when I went to individual frames, I was able to align them. And I actually don't know how to do that with DS9. By the way, wherever I put my mouse, you'll notice that it's sampling up on the uh, top right-hand window. So you can, what pixel you're over is displayed there. And there's a lot of information, including the uh, coordinates, the individual value, which is not the same as the photometry and uh, some other information. But honestly, I'm just trying to make a pretty space picture. So let's go back to zoom, let's do zoom fit. And I've already got what I wanted. So the easiest thing to do there was to uh, say frame new RGB and then from this window, select them one at a time, fiddle around with the scaling there until you get the picture you want. And I'm actually ready to save this. Uh, by the way, if you wanna play around with these different scales, you can change each individual one diff uh, 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 independently. So you can do red, blue, and green in different ways to get different effects. I'm gonna go back to the way I had it because it's more or less, that's good enough. Now I'm gonna show you one of, its, one of the most fun features of DS9. And by fun, I mean not fun. If you are on a Macintosh and the windowing environment isn't exactly lined up correctly, it'll crash when you try to export it. So I want to make sure I have this thing exactly how I want it before I try and save this file. And I'm going to go to export. And I'm going to go to PNG, which is what I always use. And it's going to ask me where I want to put it. And uh, I already have my Aladdin one and my GIMP one saved. So instead of GIMP, I'll put DS9. And then I'm going to do what I, I know it's going to crash. But I'm going to hit OK. Let it do its thing. And notice it, it quit unexpectedly. Nothing is broken. The FITS files weren't altered. Uh, by the way, if you look at my desktop down here, you can see that it, uh, it did. There it is. It did actually save it. Uh, and I'm just going to hit ignore. And I'm going to open this guy. And you know what? we can compare and contrast my three images and however I was feeling at that moment, whichever set of things I selected really determines the color. The programs didn't do it, it was all my creative process and if I fiddled around with DS9 a little bit more and played with the scaling and the stretching, I could get different effects. Uh, this is the Aladdin one which looks pretty blue to me. Here's the DS9 one which looks pretty red to me and here's the one from GIMP. And my attitude is GIMP gives you the most control of the three, uh, but I'm telling you that uh, DS9 is a standard tool and learning how to fiddle around with the scaling and um, uh, the stretching and the color tables and that sort of stuff, that's actually a really common thing for astronomers to do using DS9. So there you have it. That's a little uh, compare and contrast between the three. Hopefully when you run DS9, it will not crash for you. So go get yourself some FITS files, download either DS9 or GIMP or Aladdin or some other cool thing. Photoshop will work too. Make yourself a pretty space picture and let me know so I can check it out. All right, good luck.